Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to show high and low values in your line chart or your column chart. So in this example we have our just some dummy data here. We have the circle representing our high and another circle here representing our low for, for this value. We can also represent that in a column chart where we have these markers. Well, in here, the line chart, these are actually markers that highlight it. In the column chart here, they're just differentiated by different colors. So we have our, our high here for, uh, in red and our low here in gray. So you may think you can just do, do this pretty easily by inserting maybe a, at least for the line chart, inserting a shape. Let's say we insert a circle shape and we just kind of show that area and we'll go to shape outline and don't have a out, uh, have an outline but don't have a fill, right? You have an outline but don't have a fill no fill right and so you can you can do that but what if your what if your data changes and or you add to the data and it's new data for in this example I'm gonna have it randomized here so if I press the F9 key you notice that the data gets random randomized and the markers follow along right and so it follows along with the data now I got this idea from Minda Tracy she has a great website my online training hub a lot of great Excel information on there. Go check it out if you have time. And this is how it's done. And I'll show you how to do it with the marker on the line chart. And I'll also show you how to do it on the column chart. So let's just have some dummy data here. And I'll just use a random number generator, ran between function, between maybe 100 and 600. Close, control enter to stay in that cell. Let me double click the fill handle here to copy the formula down. And all I need to do, and I'm going to create my line chart first. All I need to do here is put an if statement in, right? So I want to find out the max. Well, let's let's start with the max statement, right? What is the maximum value in this range? And I need to put a dollar sign, F4, F4 dollar sign in front of those. So when I copy the formula down, it will tell me what it is, right? So let me double click that to bring it down and it shows it's 568 somewhere. That's the last value here. Now I gotta wrap this in a if statement. So I'm gonna do if, if this maximum value, does it equal this cell here? If it does, then I wanna bring this cell back into cell C2. If it doesn't, let's put NA. So there is actually an NA function in Excel and all it's going to do is give you that error, that hash NA error. Close parentheses, press control enter, and now you notice that it gave you that error because of course that is not the maximum number, that's not the highest number. I'm going to double click fill handle to copy the formula down, double click, and now you notice now it has picked up the highest number there, right, 521. I'm going to do the same thing for the lowest number and of course the function, it's pretty much going to be the same set of functions here, but instead of using the max function, we're going to use something called the min function. So it's going to find the minimum value. I'm going to copy this formula, control C to copy, press escape. So I'm out of edit mode, go into my cell here, go into the formula bar, control V to paste. And instead of max, I'll type min. Control enter to stay in that cell. Now you notice that it's not going to pick up 424 because that's not the lowest value. The lowest value is going to change. But let me double click the fill handle to copy the formula down. And now you notice it's picked up 123 for that is the lowest value there. So all I need to do now is take this particular range of data. I can select anywhere in here because Excel is going to be pretty smart enough to figure out this is my range of data that's going to be plotted on my chart. So I'll go to insert and insert a line chart, All right? Now, it's inserted the line chart and actually I probably wanted a line chart with markers. So let's change the chart type. And we're gonna have a line chart with markers. Click OK. And we have our marker here. You notice that it's picked up the marker here for high and the one for low. And what we wanna do is we wanna change that marker. You, In essence, what Excel has done is it's created a line chart for this value. If I click here, you notice that this particular set uh, range of data is selected. Now, if I click on the high point here, let's click on that. So what that has done 
Excel has actually charted uh, column A, the values in column A, and the values in column C. And the only thing that really showed up is 598. The NAs don't get plotted in the graph, but the 598 does, and that marker gets plotted. Same thing for the, the, the values or the series of values in the low column, right? So everything, the only thing that gets plotted is 123 for that marker. All right, so that's how Excel is working. In essence, there's three line charts here. It's just that with the NAs, you don't see the lines for the other ones. Now what we wanna do is we wanna change those markers. So let's start with the high one first. I'm gonna right click, go under Format Data Series, and for the marker, let's see if I picked out the marker. Let's click that again. All right, let me go and click on the paint bucket. Yeah, we want the marker here. So what we wanna do is we don't want to have a fill in that marker, so let's make that no fill. But we do want a border. We want a solid line border and our marker. Now what we can do is we can have the, we can choose one of the marker options. Maybe we want to make it bigger. Right now by default it's the circle. Maybe we want to make it bigger. We'll take the built-in and make this 10, right? And you can see how, how big that, no, it doesn't, doesn't look that big. Let's make it a little bit bigger, maybe 20. Let's see how that looks. Right, and press tab to execute that. And so that's our marker right there. And what it's done is, since there's no fill, this is the, if you look at that, it's the uh, circle marker. Let me see if I hover over it, maybe tell you, it may tell you what it is. No, it doesn't, but basically that's a circle marker. And we just didn't have a fill in there for that. You can, you can see there's other markers here. You can choose like a square or a diamond, whatever, but a fill is kind of nice to have there. Let's make that also a differentiate that since that's the high value, we'll give that, if it's a good number, if this is supposed to be good, let's give it a green, right? Give it a green. And we also may want to increase the width size of that to make it a little bit thicker, right? So maybe one point, eh, maybe 2.0, right? And so that really shows us that green. So what we're going to do is do the same thing for this low marker. Select that and Select built in. We had it on 20 last time. Let's do 20 again. And the fill is no fill. And let's think that the low is bad. So what we're, we're going to do is give it a red color and also increase this to 2.0. Let's just put type 2, press tab, and we have our 2.0. Now, what we can also do is uh, make it look a little bit nicer. And we can get rid of the grid lines here. Select the grid, li grid lines, press delete and probably maybe put a label on there. Uh, cl click on my high, right click, add data label, and it's gonna add the data label. It's added 598, which is that value there. Let's just say we don't want that value. Just, we, we just want to say high. So I'm gonna select that, right click, and go under format data labels, and let's take the series from the name, right? The name is high, and let's not show the values, and let's have that above. Maybe we actually want to have the value. So we know that high is 598. It's really hard to see it here on the line here. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to select our, our, our little point there, our marker there, right click, add data label, and it's 123. Click on the data label, right click, and then format data label. And we'll have the series name, show leader lines, and let's make it below. This high is going to be above, low is going to be below. Click on that and we have our chart. And we can probably get rid of the legend here, or parts of the legend. Maybe I don't want this low part. I select it again, press delete, select high, press, select high, press delete. And now you notice that when I press the F9 key to recalculate my random between function, if I press the F9 key, you notice now it changes, whoops, it didn't pick up that high. Let's see why it didn't do that. Let's go in here again, click it, click it again, just to select that one. Maybe I didn't select it twice because sometimes you need to select just that marker to do that. Right click, go under format, let's see, format data point, and go my marker here, the mark, uh, select my marker, no fill, solid line, that's gonna be green, and let's make this 2.0. 2.0 and for my marker, my marker options, that is going to be built in and I think we made this 20, I think that was 20. Press tab 
and oh no fill no fill right there right so let's see if it uh, works again press the F9 key so now when I press the F9 key it's going to follow along and wherever the high is or the low are it's going to wrap that circle around the lows and the highs so that's the way that we do it with a line chart how do we do it with a column chart well let's turn this into a column chart and see how that works out click right click on the chart itself let's change the chart type and we're going to change it into a column chart right so let's uh, look for where's my column chart is it right here and we'll just change it to that kind of column chart right click OK and now you notice oh it's a big mess and the reason why it's doing this is because we have our NAs NAs don't really show up nicely with column charts and what we need to do is we either have to turn that into a zero or just a blank so we have to turn our NAs into either zeros or blanks so I just put in a zero it makes it easier I don't have to type in as much if we want to do a blank what we do is put two uh, double quotes so that's typing two, th two times instead of just pressing zero so I'll just type zero it makes it easier press control enter to stay in that cell double click the fill handle to bring it down do the same thing for this particular set of data put a zero there control enter and double click the fill handle to bring it down and now you notice that that's there now the reason why uh, all these labels are down there is because I had I had my labels earlier right it doesn't really show up too nicely here and that's one of the uh, bad things about a column chart let's delete those labels press delete select those labels again press delete is it's not as easy it's, it's not as easy to uh, do the labeling on the column chart to because of uh, the zeros these are actual values here since the NAs are not really values they don't show up in the, the chart but since there's zeros here if you put labels here they will show up to have this chart represent my highs and lows you can see my highs here in the orange and the low here in the gray what we need to do is kind of overlay it right on top of each other. Now, as I mentioned before, the this this particular chart is is in essence two charts, right? There's there's well there's two series of data on the chart, right? The the high, the low, or actually there's three: the high, the low, and the quantity, right? And we have the blue ones, which are the quantity, the highs, which is just this red one, but the zeros are basically down here when you think about it. And we have our low, which shows up here with, with the other zeros that are basically down there. What we need to do is we need to overlap the high and lows on top of the um, blue ones here. So let's see how we do it. Let me select my data point here, right click, and format data point. And what I want to do is have my series overlap at, I think it was actually... 100%. So it's going to overlap. So since I selected any of the values, actually I could probably have could have selected any of the values here because I just want them to overlap. So in essence, we have our values here. So one of the things about this particular chart is that let's add our label. Let me right click, add data label, and you notice that it really um, added the data label nicely for that. And if I click on my low one, I right click and add data label for that one and it added the data label for that but then also it added the zeros here so a way to work around that is to change the uh, numbering format I've selected the label here let's go under I believe it's maybe text options oops no label options and let me find our number I think uh, here under under the label options go to number and we need to create a custom number format click on there click on custom number format so this custom norm number format it, it takes um, what you can say is four arguments and they're separated by semicolons so this first argument here is what it's going to represent if the number is positive how it's going to represent the number if it's negative the second argument here is, is you can see this dash pound sign the third argument here if there was something there uh, if there was like a dash if there was a dash there it would re it would show you a representation of that number if it was a zero and then there's a last argument it will it'll show you the formatting of the rep representation if it was text so in this what I want to do is I want to say 
Okay, if, if there's a positive number, let there be a placeholder for the number. If there's a negative number, let there be a placeholder for a number, but also put the negative symbol there. And there's, for my third option there, make it blank. You know, if there's a zero, just make it blank. So I'll click Add. And it should have done that there. And I think it only did it for that one because I selected that. Oops. Let me select the label here. Go back to my number and see what it picked out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go and select it for, I selected for everything. Go under Custom and click Add. And actually, actually, now it's all gone, right? So that took care of that one. So that's that's basically how you would get rid of those zero labels. Um, since that's a positive number, it shows up there, right? So if again, if I press the F9 key to recalculate, now you notice that, oops, that one didn't pick up over there. So let's see what happened here. Let's right click, go under Format Data Series, and let's see what happened to my data label. Let's click on my data label here, my data, right click, Format Data Point. And let's click on my series options. Oh, let's click on my data labels, right? My series, series high data labels, right? Let's click on that and see what happened here. And I'm going to go to number and see what happened. Oh, it's in general. Let's go to custom and click add. And let's see what happens now. Press the delete F9 key. So let's see my data labels. Let's right click, format data labels. Let's see what happened. Uh, let's see. Oh, value. <laughs> I needed the value there. Let's click on that and get rid of that. Make sure my number is, shows up here. Custom, custom. Good. So now I can press me my F9 key, and on the various times it occurs, recalculates. Uh, you can see that it's happened here again too. We have our data labels. But anyway, this one's a little bit nicer since there's no line in between. It shows my two lower values at 100. So we showed our high and low values here for our column chart. So there's our example of how to create high and low markers for a line chart and also for a column chart. You can see that there's some differences in between how you would do both of them. In the line chart, you're going to use the NA, but in the column chart, you're going to use the zeros if the value is false. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.